So here is tutorial two, and we're going to be looking at the second objective to determine if a function is one-to-one. -one. The previous tutorial just ended with this problem where we proved that j of x and k of x are indeed inverses. What I'd like to explore now is what the graphs look like and make a graphical um, exploration with this. So j of x, let's graph this in um, in red, or I'm going to graph it in red. This, I know how to graph this. This is a basic cubic that has shifted down one unit and has been stretched twice as much. So I know that the basic cubic usually starts at zero, zero. So I'm going to put my first point one unit below that because of the um, vertical shift. And two units here and two units here. Um, this is a sketch of our cubic function. That's j of x. That was a little off there, but that's not too bad. Um, I don't really know how to graph this one. So what I'd like to do is um, figure out a few of the ordered pairs that are on g of x, uh, excuse me, j of x and use those. So I know that um, 1, 1 is one of the ordered pairs that's on there, and uh, 0, negative 1 is on j of x, and negative 1, negative 3. All of these ordered pairs are on j of x. And since we know that to find the inverse, really all we need to do is swap the x's and the y's of our ordered pairs, I know on k of x, which I'm going to do in blue, I know that k of x would have the points 1, 1. Obviously, if the 1's swap, that doesn't really change anything. But when these swap, negative 1, 0 is going to be on k of x. And this, it will make negative 3, negative 1. When I plot these three points, let's see, 1, 1. Well, that's still the same point. Negative 1, 0 is right here. And negative 3, negative 1 is down here. This is a sketch of k of x. And what you might note now is that these graphs are symmetrical. But the question is, where are they symmetrical? They are symmetrical. There's a lot of different places you can be symmetrical. You could be symmetrical around the y-axis. These graphs are not symmetrical around the y-axis. Around the x-axis, which these graphs are not. They could have rotational symmetry, like the odd graphs, but these do not. These graphs are symmetric right along this diagonal. I'm going to dot in this diagonal line. And what is the equation of this diagonal line? Well, that is y equals 1x plus 0, or simply y equals x. And hey, look at that. When we were finding our compositions, the compositions had to equal x. And that's why graphically, they're going to be symmetrical around the line y equals x. So if you're looking at the graphs of two inverses graphically, I guess that's what the graphs would be, um, then you know that they will be symmetric around y equals x. And if they're going to intersect, then they have to intersect at a place where the x and y coordinates are exactly the same. That's why when 1, 1 was a point on j of x, 1, 1 would have to also be on k of x. So they'd have to intersect at 2, 2, or 3, 3, or 4, 4, or negative 5, negative 5. OK. One last little question with this graph before we go to the next one is um, both of these actually are functions. If you take your vertical line and cross through the red function, the j of x, it hits only one point at a time. If you take a vertical line and use your vertical line test on the blue, it also only crosses one point at a time. So these are inverses, and they are both functions. When we look at our next graph, I know that this blue, I don't know what it is, maybe a hockey stick? I guess that's why we call it H of X. OK. <laughs> So this blue function right here, even though it just starts right here and stops right here, it does pass the vertical line test. That's great. What if I want to graph the inverse of this supposed hockey stick? Well, I don't really even have an equation for this blue part. So I'm going to have to use the idea that we just did and find some ordered pairs. So maybe this order, I'll start right here. This ordered pair is negative 2, negative 1. And this ordered pair is 0, 
excuse me, negative one, zero. And let's see, let's find another good order pair. This little one looks like a good order pair. That looks like one, negative one. And let's find another good one. Let's see this one. This looks like it's three, negative two. So if I can find a few points that are on this hockey stick and I swap them or invert them to negative one, negative two, and zero, negative one, and negative one, one, and negative two, three, and now just plot these, these would be on the inverse. And maybe I call it h inverse of x. So let's plot these. Negative 1, negative 2 would be here. 0, negative 1 would be here. Negative 1, 1 would be here. And negative 2, 3 would be here. I hope that that is enough for you to see that our new function, excuse me, our new um, graph would look like this. That's not too bad. Does it look like these are symmetrical around y equals x? Because we know that they should be. Let's dot that in and see. It does look like they are symmetrical around y equals x. And it does look like that when they intersect, that is right on the line y equals x. I don't know what it is. Maybe negative 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth. But it is the same thing. OK. What I want to point out here is even though the blue graph is a function because it passes the vertical line test, now this red graph does not pass the vertical line test. It fails the vertical line test in a couple different places. If we drew in a vertical line right there, it's crossing more than one spot. So the blue is a function, but its inverse is not a function. And that's important to note, because not all functions will have an inverse that is a function. We need to make sure that a function is one to one. There is an easy way to test to see if a function is one to one. The function must pass the vertical and the horizontal line tests. So if it passes the vertical line test, that makes it a function, of course. We know that from Algebra 1. If it also passes the horizontal line test, which is the same exact thing except with the horizontal line, then we know that its inverse will be a function. So if we go back to our previous um, one, the red graph, if we're just looking at the red, the cubic, it passes the vertical line test, of course. But if you, pass, if you draw a horizontal line, Let's see if I can just do that real fast. Take a horizontal line and cross that through the red graph. That is also crossing only one point at a time. So since a vertical line goes through at one point at a time and a horizontal line goes through the red graph one point at a time, we know that that red graph is indeed one to one. Let me get rid of this line. Throw that in the trash, OK? As opposed to this one, well, I guess I need that line again. If I draw a vertical line, the vertical line, to, I'm just looking at the blue. It crosses one point at a time with that blue. But then if I make that a horizontal line, that's about a horizontal line, good. And I try to cross that through the blue, it fails right there. It crosses more than one point. So the blue is not a one-to-one -one, uh, function. So therefore, the blue will not have an inverse that's a function. And we know that now because we actually graphed the inverse already. So we need to make sure that our graphs are one-to-one. -one. And what that means is the vocabulary word one-to-one -one means that the inverse will be a function. And again, that's important to note. 
So I want to know if these graphs are one-to-one, -one, or if these equations are one-to-one. -one. So f of x, um, I think graphically is probably the easiest way to look at this. So you can plug these into your calculator to see what the graphs look like, but this is just a basic cubic that's been shifted up one. So I know that it's going to look like this. Now that you see what the graph looks like, can you tell me if it's one-to-one -one or not? Well, I'm passing a vertical line through it mentally. I'm passing a horizontal line through it mentally. And it's not hitting more than one spot at a time. So yes, this is a one-to-one -one graph. And that means that the inverse is a function. Good to know. If I could spell function, that would be great. Looking at the second one, this is the graph of a parabola. You could factor this to figure out that it crosses at 0 and at 1. I'm just looking at the sketch right now. You can plug it in your calculator as well. I know that that's a function because it passes the vertical line test. But what fails to happen is it does not pass the horizontal line test. It fails it here and here and here and here and here. It fails it everywhere, basically, when you cross right through it. So this fails the, vertical li the horizontal line test. So this graph is not one-to-one. -one. So since it's not one-to-one, -one, that means its inverse will not be a function. And our final one, this is the opposite of a square root function. The square root function uh, looks like this. So the opposite would just be this going down underneath like that. And I want to know if that is an inverse, excuse me, if, if this is one to one or not. Well, it obviously is a function because I called it a function from the beginning. Um, it passes the vertical line test. It doesn't cross more than one point. And when I put a horizontal line in there and cross a horizontal line like your pencil through this, it only crosses one point at a time as well. So this is a horizontal. It does pass the horizontal line test. So this is one to one. So it's really easy to see from a graph. And once it's one to one, we know that it's inverse is a function. So I need you to be able to tell me if graphs are one-to-one -one or if they are not one-to-one -one and what that means. That's the end of this tutorial and we'll see you in class to talk more about that. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.